Well, let's do some sort of tech news, because it's been quite a while, and I'm so sick of all the crap going on in AAA gaming, I have to get away from it, even though there's no getting away from it. It's almost like an addiction, except one you don't want. Instead of you going out to find the heroin, the heroin just somehow gets into your house and ejects itself into you, and then demands money for microtransactions. XFX and other onboard partners are launching their Vega 64 and Vega 56 cards. The XFX Double Edition graphics card with two custom models will improve the PCB and dual fan cooling. The GPUs on both cards stick to the reference specs, which means that we aren't looking at any factory overclock speeds. Honestly, it's a little late, but better late than never. And I'm seeing that a lot of the drivers are actually making the Vega cards a bit more desirable and in some instances beating the 1080. The only downer is the XFX is just appallingly ugly. I mean, I like the accents of carbon fiber, but I'm pretty sure it's fake. That's probably like vinyl carbon fiber. I wouldn't be surprised if that's 5D or 7D carbon fiber vinyl, which looks real, but still fake. I mean, because if that was real carbon fiber, they'd be charging you for that shit. Gigabyte also reveals their RX Vega 64 and 56 OC Winforce 2X series GPUs. Despite the earlier rumors, to the contrary, Gigabyte has created their own unique RX Vega 64 and 56 graphics cards, offering a custom PCB design and dual fan Winforce cooler with the factory overclock. This graphics card processor will come with a large cooler design with the extra tall PCB, what appears to be triple slot design under its GPU fans and shroud, which will draw heat away from AMD's Vega GPU core. We can also see copper elements on the GPU's backplate for additional passive cooling on the GPU core and VRAMs. That's actually pretty fucking sweet. I like that might be the one to grab if you're looking for an aftermarket graphics card, even though I hear Gigabyte is hit or miss right now. I know their MOBOs definitely are for X399. I think the reason why this shit took so long is because a lot of people might not know or remember, but the weird thing about Vega is I think they had two different companies making, what was it, the chips for the Vega GPUs. So there was a slight variation in size. What was it? Uh, it was so it was so minute, it's ridiculous. Like two millimeter square or something smaller than that. I can't remember the exact specs, please forgive me. But it was so minute, if you read the specs, you'd sit there and go, what the fuck's the big deal? But that slight variation in the graphics card creates a great deal of issues for onboard partners considering they don't know which one they're fucking working with. And that slight issue could lead to the GPU setting the heatsink just slightly higher than the HBM RAM, which means the RAM doesn't get the adequate cooling and it could overheat, etc. Oh, there was just a litany of issues, but I'm guessing they fixed them all. I haven't really heard much about that in months since Vega's launch. So finally, there are some aftermarket graphics cards for Andy's Vega. In other news, Google is increasing stakes in deep learning. They're also poaching engineers from NVIDIA Corporation, which is a good idea because NVIDIA has been killing it on the AI and deep learning front. I also have reason to believe that this might have something to do with Google's recent ad woes. In the sense of they probably want to improve their AI for YouTube, obviously. YouTube is probably like, YouTube loses money for Google. Whether people realize it or not, YouTube is much like Microsoft's Xbox division. People love it. People like it, they think it's doing great, but technically as much money as Google makes, YouTube is the weakest fucking link. And they could probably use better AI because they're fucking up royally there. And I'm sure my video will be flagged for that, but who cares? Also, this probably has to do with the recent just surge in AI technology for smart cars. I mean, it's the future whether you like it or not. And I have strong reason to believe that my cat is a douchebag. I have strong reason to believe that the smart car movement will only hinder people who don't want to buy a smart car in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of tax or like extra fees for insurance if you didn't own a smart car, but hopefully I'll be dead before that day comes because I'm not letting a machine drive me. Unless it's a machine from like Total Recall or something. <laughs> Google's offered a multi-million dollar package to NVIDIA's deep learning engineers willing to jump ship. Google has started poaching engineer talent from NVIDIA's deep learning department. With a very handsome package, talent hunting and shuffling is a common sight to see in Silicon Valley. But it would appear that Google is shifting into high gear and bringing out the big guns. So far, the editor has only received confirmation of engineers from the deep learning department. Google's offering eight figure packages in the range of nine to 12 million USD over the course of three years to deep learning engineers in question to shift over from NVIDIA. 
I wonder what NVIDIA is going to do about this because NVIDIA has got some money too. And deep learning is going to be big business later. It's going to be fucking huge. Everyone will want their fingers in that pie. This dropped uh, a little while back, but I kind of lost the first link, so I didn't talk about it. Well, anyway, it seems Intel is already ready to launch its first i9 processor, an i9 8950HK. And I believe the HK is a mobile processor line, isn't it? The leak information comes from a pretty reliable source. A well-regarded ADA64 system information diagnostic and benchmark app contains the processor list in its latest beta. Obviously, the software developers are readying a release to coincide with Intel's hardware launches. TechSport reports that the SKU names come to the ADA64 developers ready for an expected processor launch in early 2018. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. You really get an eye on everything. The eighth generation processors. Now we move here to the ninth generation. Everything from the i3 900 in the 900 or 9000T. I think a T is also a, isn't that a mobile device as well? Or am I just fucking straight crazy? Oh wait, it says ready for first mobile processor. So yeah, this is a mobile processor. It's like you ever just read and still not factor in what you're reading. The i9 or the i5 9600K. I hear that's gonna be a six core 12 thread processor. A fucking i5 dude that'd be sweet it's pretty much intel is now reacting to amd kicking them square in the nuts and they're now actually making some moves if you were going to go for an intel chip you probably should have skipped coffee lake to be honest and waited for your ice lake i think it's ice lake is uh what's coming up or some crap well anyway if you were holding off for a new processor like i have been for a while the uh ninth generation intel processors are probably the ones to jump to in other news, Intel's also now boosting Coffee Lake productions with additional assembly testing facilities. Coffee Lake does seem a little bit expensive. I think I was looking at like uh, the 8700K it is over $400. And it has been reported that Intel is starting to use the additional assembly and testing facilities to increase their supply of Coffee Lake CPUs, which means that Coffee Lake CPUs will now be assembled in both Malaysia and China. Until now, all of Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs have been produced in Malaysia, though Intel has stated that their testing methodology and processor technologies are identical, which means that there should be no difference between performance, reliability, and quality between both facilities. Time will fucking tell. Now, actually what I was talking about earlier, Intel's ninth generation i7 9700K. Rumor is it's going to be eight cores and 16 threads. I'm all about it, personally. I'm liking the idea that here's hoping they don't charge an arm in the fucking leg. The i3 version is going to be a four core, eight thread. The i5 version will be six core, 12 thread. And the i7 is obviously eight core, 16 threads. I support this wholly. It's about fucking time. Thank God for AMD pushing Intel to actually do something rather than jerking themselves off with a four core forever. Intel's rumored to be releasing the ninth generation core CPUs in 2018 bringing more cores to the desktop market than even their recently released 8th generation processors. According to the HKEPC, motherboard manufacturers in Taiwan have confirmed that Intel's upcoming 9th generation flagship, the i9-9700K, will feature more cores and threads than the 8th generation processor. This gives a new product core thread count that is two times larger than Intel's 7700K, which only launched earlier this year. I feel real bad for the fuckers who jumped on the 7700K. I feel bad for the people who got on the 8700K. I do. I really do. Like, the time span that this stuff has come out and how quickly Intel has been shifting to catch up with AMD, it just really pisses on the people who jumped ship early, the people who just didn't wait it out. And really, computer parts are like a waiting game. And it's a fucked waiting game because the second you actually do jump, something better comes around the corner so much faster than it did before that it's just mind-fucking numbing. I don't know. I'm definitely upgrading. My next CPU will be a minimum of eight cores. All there is to it. And I know some people sit there and go, Yeah, well, you're not doing anything to it. Well, listen, dude. Have you ever tried fucking editing videos and stuff? The After Effects garbage. Oh, God. After Effects isn't really a 3D thing, my fault. But, like, the effects program in After Effects really kind of slows me down with Adobe Open. And I know I need more fucking memory, but whatever. <sighs> you know, nobody needs, nobody's here to hear my bullshit. I'm truly looking forward to this. Because whatever Intel's doing, I'm sure Zen 2 is really going to shake some shit up. And then Intel will be forced to retaliate. It'll be a bright future for CPUs. 
So much has changed in such a short period of time. I mean, God, four cores have been around forever. The only thing that's been around as long as four cores are two cores. And I'm glad the two core days are fucking over too. Well, that should do it for me as people want me to play something with them. I apologize. I'd like to spend more time on this, but I'm trying to space myself out. You don't have to rate, comment, subscribe this because it's nothing amazing. It's nothing special. Anyone who's paying attention to tech already knows probably what's coming along the pipelines. If you are interested in building a computer or something, it's a good time as far as like CPUs go. Graphics cards are still kind of overpriced due to memory being so goddamn expensive. But point being, some nice stuff is on the horizon for a CPU and it's well worth the wait, I'd say. I'd probably kind of want to see what Zen 2 is doing, you know? I wouldn't mind jumping to, you know, an 8-core Intel, I won't lie, but I also wouldn't mind seeing if Zen can really close that single core gap as far as uh, workloads and shit go. I'll catch up with you guys later. Thanks for tuning in with me as always. If you choose to follow me on social media, you know, the more of you that are behind me, the louder my voice gets in an industry that is full of shills. And by the way, I think I have upset a few companies. You know, I, I don't think Corsair is happy with me because I pointed out that sometimes they support some really lame tit streamers. I said the same about Asus and so on. So that's probably why nobody wants to bother me. And you know what? Who cares? I don't need a corporation behind me if I got the fucking people behind me. So you can't ignore me forever. I'm building an army of a disenfranchised motherfuckers who are sick and tired of getting fucked and treated like nothing. Like they don't exist unless you want their money. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go now. I apologize.